Welcome to another edition of Get Your Fill, Financial Independence and Long Life, where we search for and explore ways to achieve those two goals, and we invite amazing people on to help us. And that is why today I am just over the moon. You're going to be so excited. <coughs> today I have with me Pagin Escavadia. She is a leadership speaker, best-selling author, award-winning businesswoman. She's an advisor to presidents and their tax forces. Ta yeah, tax tax force task forces. She's advisor to presidents and their task forces and fortune 500 executives, teaching them how to be effective at engaging their people and stakeholders. She has got, I mean, she's coaching CEOs and admirals and generals and presidents and college presidents and, you know, just unbelievable people, people who, you know, you're going to be, you're, you are, you should be incredibly honored to be now in that group because she's going to talk to us today. Pagin, thanks so much for being with me, for being with us. I'm so psyched to talk to you. Thank you so much. I am, I am thrilled to talk to you and, you know, and, and to just share some of the things that I've learned through the travels of living and living, failing, succeeding, failing, getting up, changing, keep on going. And all through that, finding your own authenticity, the sense of clarity, especially regarding, you know, finances and prosperity and abundance. So I'm really excited to be here with you. Awesome. Well, Pagin, that's what I was going to ask you is about your journey. I mean, I know that you are like top of the top of the cliff, top, not the cliff. That's maybe not the right <laughs> top of the mountain. I am at the top of the top and I keep on leaping off. <laughs> I would like just to be serene and just like, no <laughs> leaping, just stay here. <laughs> but, you, you know, you're very well respected. You have a great business. You have all kinds of exciting things happening. A lot of people are looking to you for advice. But I mean, did, was this always your journey? We always just like, you know, started off silver spoon in the mouth. Don't notice what to do. I mean, what's your what's your story? Share. <laughs> so I love that about silver spoon in my mouth. I did have a spoon in my mouth, which meant. <laughs> because I really like to eat a lot. <laughs> so I did have a spoon in my mouth, but that's, that's definitely not the house I grew up in. So I grew up, so the fast, quick thing is I grew up in the Bronx. I grew up uh, with a single mom. My dad had been an alcoholic and an abuser. Mom kicked him out. Mom, uh, some of my earliest memories about money was mom going through her pockets, trying to find money for um, food for us. So she would search that, you know, to go buy milk or whatever it is. We were blessed because my grandmother had uh, been an astute um, seamstress in New York City. And she and her husband, who were both immigrants, had worked really hard, saved money and bought, uh, were able to buy a bar as well as work at the post office and as well as work as a seamstress. And so they were able to take their money and eventually buy a house where by my, my mom, who at that point was a single mom, hold on. <clears throat> and my aunt, who was also at that time a single mom, we all moved in together with grandma. And so I had the security of having a home in the Bronx, in a rough neighborhood, I was probably one of the only kids who at that point who came from a divorced family. And, you know, I, I can look back and money was tight for sure. I, but, but at the same time, you know, I have, I lived dual life. I, and it's taken me years to appreciate that because for years and years and years and years, especially through my pro my prosperity journey, especially through my abundance journey for years and years and years, I only looked at everything that was bad in my life at that time. So for years, my story is about the break at the violin, how sad it was. You know, I was in a gang. I was, there was the roughness and toughness. There was all of that stuff, um, in, in more than most people have experienced. But at the same time, what I didn't appreciate until I started my own abundance and prosperity journey is that I also learned incredible skills of how to sell. So, you know, when I had to make money and I was, I don't know, 10, I went around and I sold, I collected from oak trees, used to fall and have these little 
um, like these little seed things. Like the helicopter would, things? Yeah, yeah, right. So <laughs> exactly, the helicopter things. And I would package them and sell them to people. What so do they I do them? Like, I put them in a little baggie and I knock on people's doors and say, hey, would you buy my seeds for 25 cents? <laughs> and I sold them. I mean, they could get them free outside, but I think that one is that they were moved by, it was some little kid that was trying to hustle, yeah. right? Trying to do something. And when I look at my costs, it probably cost me more to get the baggies and the time and effort than what I was receiving. But, and, but I never appreciate that. I never recognize that as a resourceful skill. Like, like, so, so my journey, um, I ended up going to, when I was 17, I, I was in a gang and I was in this rough tumble and I wasn't really confident about myself. Although again, when I look back, I have a lot of duality. So I had many, many, many blessings, but at that point in my life, I did not see any of the blessings. I only saw, saw that it was get me out of here. And that led me to go to Spain and when I was 17 and a half by myself, I didn't go with a group. I had a thousand dollars on me. Don't ask me how I got it. I did pay it back. And um, in Spain, it was a, became, how do I survive? How do I survive in a country that I don't really know the language? I've run out of money. I can't, I don't have a ticket home. I am here. And so again, at that point, I didn't know about prosperity. I didn't know about abundance. I didn't know, what I did know was street smarts. I did know, I gotta eat, I gotta get my stuff together. And so through, I had been a early childhood assistant, you know, that was my part-time job in, in New York. My mom had been a school teacher and, and, and ran early child centers. So I knew sort of kind of what that is. And I couldn't find a job being that, being an assistant in Spain. So I actually came up with the idea of I'll run open the first bilingual nursery school. And I went and I pitched this idea to this woman and she said, well, and, and, and my tumbled Spanish. And she said, I, uh, I'm not interested, but this guy Pedro just came in and he's interested in investing in something. And so we connected. I didn't know that that was an abundance prosperity experience. Honestly, I just, uh, my mind was at now I was 18, just like, oh my God, I need to survive. Like, I just need to survive. And so I, I never worked as, I, I worked so hard on that business. And we, if we became, we ended up opening three nursery schools. We ended up having um, Coca-Cola and all these Coca-Cola, uh, some of the other American expats that live, co corporate executives sent their kids because they had English and Spanish, they had American culture and Spanish culture. So they're, so that's how we build a business. My focus at that time was just running the business, not necessarily really understanding the money, right? Um, and after three years, I was in a bad relationship. So I wanted to leave the, Spain and, and I came back again. So I came back. Um, I remember my mom calling my mom up and saying, you know, I need to get out of this. And she flew to Spain. It was the first time women back then didn't have credit cards and they had just issued credit cards to women. So my mom had her first American Express card and um, she was visiting me and she was ready to leave. And she said, I'll send you the airline tickets. Well, I was in a really abusive, horrible relationship. And I said, no, you're not, no, no. And he had taken away my passport. So, uh, so I said, no, we're going to go get my passport of the American embassy. I need you to come with me because you're my mom and you're using your, your credit card to get me my ticket home. And that was the first time she ever used a credit card. And thank God she had it because I came home. I still I either. sold my <laughs> practice to Pedro, but I left everything, everything I left there. So I really had to start from scratch. My story is start from scratch, move up, get to a place. Oh crap to start from scratch, move up, get to the top, start again. Oh crap, start again. <laughs> That's been my story of my life. Um, and it's been extraordinary. It's been wonderful. So that's, that's how I started was I am scrappy. I used to have a mantra, be feisty, be fearless, be focused, have fun. And I say it by going, be feisty, be focused, be fearless, have fun. 
And that became my mantra because I had to survive. And I was kept on, my head kept on going into some dark spaces. And when I go to dark spaces, those dark spaces, uh, and, and and I'm not talking about depression or it, it's just sometimes it's hard. And so I, I didn't have the tools to self-love, to appreciate who I was, to see my strengths. I didn't know that I was resourceful. I didn't know that I, that I had all these amazing talents. And it took a long time for me to see that abundance in me. It's true. We so, always think that everybody else has our same skill set plus their own. Right? Yeah. You think, oh, you know, I didn't like even this. think about skill sets, don't you? I mean, no, like, I know. But I mean, even as a kid, you wouldn't like say to yourself, wow, I'm pretty cool. I'm like, I've come up with the idea of, you know, gathering up helicopters and putting them in a baggie and selling them door to door. I mean, that's like, you know, when I no, hear that, I wanted thinking, the 25 cents to go buy some penny candy. <laughs> you know, it, there was, there, there was like, oh, if I do this, I'll get that. But I never thought about it. I, I remember. Um, when I was 16, a friend of mine, she was a waitress. And I remember going to her bedroom and she took out rolls and rolls of dollars. I mean, rolls, I, they were like rolls, big rolls. And I had never seen that much money in my life. And, and she was, uh, she was a hard worker. She was a hustler. She, I mean, she worked hard as a waitress. Um, and I went to one of the places that she worked and got a, a waitress job. I lasted about two weeks because I was like, you are so not talking to me. It was a truck step. And like, no, nobody talks to me like that, you piece of crap. And I, you know, later on, I did become a waitress and I made tons of money. I learned how to market myself as a waitress. But people don't realize you can make, I, you know, I, it was easy for me to make $1,000 as a waitress. In a, in a small restaurant, but I learned how to market myself. I learned how to sell the food. I learned customer service so that everybody, the best people wanted me and they left me great tips. I changed my, I, was that abundance thinking? I didn't know it was abundance thinking. I thought about it. I didn't know any of that. And you're right. You just don't you're not aware of some of the incredible talents that you have until you spend some time thinking about yourself and investing in yourself and seeing what you do. So did I answer your question? <laughs> I forget what it was. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yes, you did. Yeah, that was, that was awesome. So, I mean, how did you do that though? I mean, how did you like go from, okay, I'm going to, you know, I'm, I'm crawling out of an abusive relationship. I'm going back to the States. I'm starting over, you know, how, how did you like, at what point did you say, all right, I got to fix me. You know, I, I don't, I'm not, you know. Really great question. Um, the, the, so there were two things that showed up in my life purely. I don't even remember how they showed up. I really don't. One was, I used to go to school in, in, in uh, so I lived in the Bronx, so I went to Manhattan. So you, you went on the train and then trains would have newsstands, right? And somehow I picked up the magazine, Success Magazine, when I was back. Well, it was before I left for Spain. So it was like when I was 17, going to school, you know, I went to high school in the city. Um, and, and Success Magazine was filled with these quotes and these messages, which honestly, just so you know, I thought was a bunch of BS um, because I was proving every one of those statements, think what you want to have to think. And you're going to get like, break you. What do you think I want what I have? Are you freaking crazy? Oh, believe in yourself. You're the only break. What? I mean, I, I argued with every quote, every statement, every article. Oh, oh, you're, you know, that's easy for you to say you're rich. So of course you're saying that. Oh, of course you're writing that. You know, you had everything easy for you. You don't understand what my life is. You don't know what I've done. Um, I was out to prove, to, I, I really became out to prove 
my life sucked compared to yours. Do you know what I mean? I think I've got chances. I got no chances and I'm going to show you. Oh yeah. How wrong you are. You think you're freaking tough. You don't know what to, I I used to beat up this. I I fought with that. You know, my sister with this, my, you know, I had all, I had tons of stories to prove to, to prove to these people that were in a book that didn't even know me (laughs) that they were wrong. Right. But but at the same time, I didn't get let go of that magazine. At the same time, there was a part of me and in, maybe it was my inner fire, my inner desire, my source, my God, I don't know. But there was a part of me inside that said, God, can why do people think like this? Is this another way of being? Is this, what, what is this? And then I found the book, Think and Grow Rich through that and so this is my this is probably my 50th copy of thinking grow wow (laughs) Uh, so i study it and back then i studied it i read it i didn't understand 95 percent of it i thought that well these are these are for old white guys um (laughs) i i didn't understand a lot that I was reading, but I did understand. I wanted to understand the title. <laughs> like I wanted to understand that he would think and grow rich. So many people were talking about that and, and like in Sex Success magazine, they were talking about think and grow rich. So what is that? What is that? You know, like what do they know that I don't know? But I, I am not saying that like, I was really wondering, what do they know <laughs> that I don't know? I, I, I want knew to, there was nothing that they knew. I want to make sure <laughs> really clear to people that I didn't know that I was starting a journey. I want people to be really clear. I was pissed off. I was angry. I was... I used many a curse word. I had lots of proof, um, but I did not know that all of that stuff was about my thinking. I, I took, I had no idea that I was thinking in a way that was hurting me deeply. That was, I was thinking in a way that was giving me exactly what I was thinking, which was exactly what I didn't want to have. Right. And I, I had no clue about that. So anyway, I read there that led me really, that's how, you know, I was on the corner. I was in a gang. This thought came to me and there's a part of the book where he calls about desire. There was a thought that popped into my head as I was standing on the corner with the bandana and the jacket and (laughs) talking like that. And, with these these, um, people that you were all too afraid to even be around. (laughs) And it was at that, and I really truly had this this image of me on a screen. And so funny that we do Zoom now, right? Because it was this kind of thing. Now I knew it was, it was an essence of me. And I was on a screen. I had no idea what that meant zero the, but that was the decision that i needed to leave the country to get out of the gang to led to the, so that vision was vision dream message i don't know but i definitely think that because i was reading think rich maybe that implanted in my mind that's what got me at that I, I and it got me to drive to i wanted to be an expert in something didn't know what that meant had no idea what it meant had no no clue what that meant, you know, when Spain came back. And so that's how I started. And then when I came back, when I was 23, I started, I took Est because my mom made me to take Est. Like a lot of times people have quote unquote, made me take a self-improvement clause, quote unquote, push me to take, read a book, force me to give an assignment. Notice, Every single step, it was, 
you made me do it. I took no responsibility that I was on this journey, but I'm really grateful because obviously inside of me was the thought of, I want this stuff. I'm just too scared to step into a place to do the self-work. I'm too scared of how bad am I if I take this, how bad will I find myself to be? Yeah. What will I uncover? What demons will uncover in me? I was frightened of that because of what I had been telling myself. Yeah. Um, that was a big, you know, I, I get, as I'm talking to you, I could actually feel the fear that I felt of doing a self-discovery to find out the demon was me. Yeah. Wow. But you stuck with, I mean, I read Think and Grow Rich the first time and I was like, oh, that was a nice book. And I just put it away. And it was 20 years before I picked it up again, because it's same, like I, I read it like I would read, you know, War and Peace, you know, I just read it like a book and then, okay, that, thanks, you know, I put it away. And, but you, you know, you've bought 50 copies, you've stuck with it. You've allowed it to like worm its way into your subconscious mind. Right. And that's. Yeah. But don't, don't think that it was just like, Oh, I'm going to study this book now because that's not at all what it was. <laughs> it was more like, oh, I read the book. Yeah. Somebody would say, think of courage. Oh, yeah, maybe I should pick that book up again. Oh, I got some ideas. Oh. And so over time, I kept on buying these books. <laughs> not, and then I, then I look at my bookshelf. I'm like, oh, all right, I got two copies of this. <laughs> You know, oh, oh, well, so, so clearly this needed to happen for me and that's, and then, um, and then I started with a group. So um, Dominique and I were 26 years old. I'll never forget this. Dominique and I were 26 years old. We both had done S, which is kind of like um, the landmark forum. We had gotten involved with another self-improvement guru group. Um, and we kept on hearing about thinking grow rich. And so we decided with each other were, was to let's read the book together. And so we made a date every week we met, we read, we learned, we absorbed, we debated, we discussed and our lives started changing. Um, now I will, I'm going to tell you this truth is um life started to change but not like everybody thinks that it changed trust me i i, I wasn't having all this peace coming but i did shower of start, wealth <laughs> well but what from an abundance perspective i started being moved up rank in my job and yes i was getting increase in pay i started getting opportunities to go on these you know, go to see people that usually weren't in my norm, right? To there, see what their homes look like, to go. Um, I worked in, in the fashion. So I started going to these sample sales and seeing what, you know, getting to know what textures are. Like I was starting to be exposed to more affluent, what, what people who have abundance and affluence wear, touch, see, what do they look like? And I rebelled in every single moment. I was a, I'm, you're never going to see me wear that stuff. You're never going to see me wear that. You are never going to see me with a bow on my, you are never going to see, I mean, seriously. It was my you were dragged to success, kicking and screaming. I was a freaking. So, <laughs> so this, of all my people that I speak to, of all the people, this this is me more than anything else. My freaking rebel. Yep. <laughs> With your leather jacket and your little skin tight painted on jeans. This. Oh, look, we're be all perfect. And, you know, wear your little outfit. And, and this matches you know, that. And my hair, you see, yeah. put it all together and look at you. And, oh, and wear pearls. And I'd be like, freak y'all. No way. This is who I am. I don't know if people are saying this, but yes, I do have dolls that represent 
who I speak to and who I share, but I am all of these. So then I learned, oh, I could be this person. I could be this person. I could be that. Okay. I can still wear pearls and be cool. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, yeah. It's really funny that, you know, that's, that's what I learned. Um, so Dominique and I did that at 25. We were just, and, and we, our, both of our lives changed. Um, didn't mean that everything was roses and flowers. It was, it was more that we became aware that we were warriors. That's, that's really nicely put. I like that. You know, that we really, we understood that we were warriors for our own lives that we were warriors for our dreams. And, and while those, those, at least for me, those um, constant feeling of it's, they were doing it to me, there was more beginning of revelation for myself that it was me doing it to me. And I continue to be aware of that more and more and more. But and that's and, where the power is, right? I mean, if someone else is doing it, you can't fix it. Well, yeah. And, and sometimes you're, 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 you know, I, I definitely have found that since then sometimes your fear of being magnificent is way more, um, powerful. And can really thwart our thinking and our minds because because one is we don't know what we don't know. Two is that if we think that, gosh, I'm abundant and I'm so so this is for the women out here that are listening. If we think I'm abundant, I'm ama- I'm amazing, I'm magnificent, I'm powerful, I'm flourishing, I'm prosperous, I'm I'm filled with resources. Those are not thoughts that we normally learn. As a matter of fact, as women, we are taught not to do that. We are taught, um, we are taught to be in service, take care of the family, take care of my our parents, take care of our bosses, take care of the leaders, take care of, take care, take care, take care, take care, take care of the kids, take care of the, our volunteers and take care of that. And we are, and we are never taught to take care of ourselves. We, we hear take care of ourselves. So maybe take care of yourselves is going to work out and exercise to fit into somebody's const- construct of who we're supposed to look like or be, but not because of our own internal desire to feel our most magnificent selves. Not necessarily because we've been thinking I'm, a, I'm beautiful and I'm amazing and I'm brilliant and I'm smart and I'm rich and I'm abundant and I'm wealthy. Not because of that. We're usually, oftentimes it's so that I could fit into that pair of clothing that they say is the hit style for that moment or that um god you know my first book came out and um the publisher said i had to grow my hair with bangs because they don't buy books from women with short hair what and did i grow my hair long i grew my hair long i had a little i, had a little, I was showing this to somebody the other day you know where is this uh, you know I, oh yeah oh my so goodness I had to be this, what, you know, I would, that would, this was so not me. Right. (laughs) Um, But you're told, you're really told who you're supposed to be. Yeah. And that's the, the gift is who do I want to be? How do I want to be? And how do I hold myself with integrity and, and discipline and confidence to be that person? Yeah. Yeah. That's, and it's a lifelong journey. 
oh, girl, let me tell you something. One thing that I've learned is if you're not growing and learning and discussing yourself, that's when you die. When you think that you don't have something else to fight for, you know, to be a warrior for. Right. Really, you've got to be a warrior for something. So whether it be, you know, that, that, that you're that you're supposed to make an impact in some shape or form, whatever that is, it doesn't matter. It's when you think that, yeah, I'm done. That you're done. Yeah, I'm already perfect. That's it. Nothing else to nothing else to strive for, right? Yeah, yeah. I think so. Nothing yeah. else. And it's not nothing to strive for from an external piece. It's a, what are you striving for within yourself? What, how else can you express yourself? How else can you um, fill your soul with such joy and faith and passion and be orgasmic in every you know interaction that you can do? Yeah. I love that. It's one of my favorite words. <laughs> and why not? <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah I, no, it's true. I mean, it's it's the now what kind of thing, right? That's like every time I accomplish something like within myself, I'm like, okay. And so you have that one day when you think, wow, I really learned that thing. And I'm really, you know, I've made this evolution and I'm, and then the next thing you're like, oh, but I'm still sort of an idiot. Oh, damn. <laughs> Yeah. And that's, that's not to that extreme, right? But no, no, but it does come to, I mean, honestly, I, we, we definitely know that we learn that really our learn, our words matter. So I do this, you know, I know when I, you know, Hey, I'm doing great. I'm doing great, great, great. All this chick, chick, chick is happening. And then there's that moment where maybe I'm waking up and I'm like, Oh my goodness, I have to be really aware in that moment of what I'm thinking, which is why, and, and this is why I have, and, and I'll, if, it, if it's okay with you, I'll share my, you know, what we're talking about abundance. Yeah, please. So I carry a book with me. I do it every year. It's a little book, right? So I have two things in this book that are critically important. The first half of the book is my business plan. It's what have I decided to do um, this year? How am I making money? What are the different uh, What are the different ways I'm making money? And and so I list them out for myself. I always open the book is that I write myself a love letter. I always write myself a love letter, January first, acknowledging and appreciating everything that I did in the past year. Every and it and it's very very simple, so that you know I don't do pages. It's just I I've done pages. This particular opening of the book is an appreciation of where I've been, and then I write myself a letter that's a second page, which is an appreciation of what I'm accepting for myself this coming year. And then I have a tab that says income producing activities. I have all of the, the ways that I make money on two pages. So I'm, you know, I'm able to see it on two pages. Um, and then I break down all the different things that I've done to be able to do that. I know, so I know how I'm making my money. Then towards the end, so you'll see I have red stickers over here. And then I have these other kind of stickers here. This is more my life piece. So I log every major milestone that I have on a daily, every, every couple of days, I'll write the major milestone. Because what happens is you, you forget what you've achieved. If you don't write it down, you forget. So I, so I write down those major mind shifts or that major step that that occurred for me because time will make me forget i have learned from thinking grow rich i write my declarations so in the book thinking grow rich in the beginning of desire he shares how to write your declaration 
So what, you know, by just, but you give the date by whatever the date is I have in my possession, whatever it is that you're saying. And it comes to me in various amounts from time to time throughout the year. And I then share what I'm going to do to receive what I'm saying that I'm going to receive. So I provide, uh, you know, I, I declare and I accept the truth. I'm a superstar for personal professional development for women worldwide. My, my services, productions, trainings, inspire, inform, and impact the lives of women worldwide. So, and I have a long list over there, but I also do it for my own life. So I, so I do, you know, by December, I'm strong, fit, well, healthy. I'm my best, most healthy self. My body continues to transform from time to time throughout the year. And I write what I commit to doing for myself. Then what I have listed are my affirmations so that when I'm in that mode, I could be thinking about the abundance. I don't have to go search somebody else's affirmations. I have my own. So I'm healthy, happy, healthy, wise, and wealthy. I'm pure, strength, courageous, strong, victorious, beautiful, feminine, and powerful. I use my positive force and energy and passion for good. I embody, embody fiery emotions. I'm a lioness. I'm in flow. I'm enlightened. I'm, I'm insightful. I'm magnificent, resourceful. I have it all and more. Fortune and fame are mine now and always. I make a difference in the world for leaders. I'm the one. I'm the master. I am Yoda. There's, And then my song is, ain't no stopping me now. I'm in the groove. So I have those things down. I have in, from, in my book, I have the Jabez prayer. Again, I have it written down specific for me, but it, you know, bless me indeed, expand my territory that you would be mine. Keep me from evil, evil and negativity that I don't do harm, cause harm to myself or others. And then if, when, I don't know if it's ever happened to you, but it certainly has happened to me when I'm in a shitty, itty, mood and I have the itty bitty shitty committee in my head I don't know how to get out of it right I just don't know so Esther Hicks who's a um, abundance leader speaker shares about 17 seconds using 17 six seconds to transform your mind well that all sounds great except if you don't have those 17 second words written down you can't remember them when you need them Right. So I have a tab of my 17 seconds and all of these are, are, are timed. I timed them. I wrote them down so that when I'm in with my itty bitty shitty committee, I can go in and I'll, so if it, you know, I'll, for instance, I'll read it. Okay. okay. So I, so I have them from all different aspects of my life, but um, okay. So here's like one, maybe if I'm, I don't know. Maybe I see something I want to buy, and it set me into, and it set me into a, a tailspin. I'll go into my 17 seconds, and I'll say, "I always have money. Money always." Oh, I'll start like this: "I always have money. <laughs> money always flows to me. Money shows up all the time. I'm in, I'm valuable. I am. I'm cherished. I know that. I'm worth millions of dollars. Well, I've done that in my whole life. I am worthy." I'm so aware. I'm a money magnet. That's right. I attract money, celebrate money, and joyous that I have money. I'm I'm a money magnet. I love money. Love it. I enjoy having it, spending it, growing it. I loving and caring of my money. So that's a 17 second shift. Yeah. So I can read super. that in that moment, and then then it stops you from going down the black hole. It's kind of a lifesaver. And I have a bunch of them that I read. Then the other thing that I do for my own uh, piece is, so in Think Grow Rich, uh, in faith, there's something called the self-confidence formula. And I think it's one of the most powerful uh, things that people can do, especially women. I think that it's, it's just so, and it's in the chapter of faith. Um, and you just read it, I write it, rewrite it and, and put it for myself. You follow exactly what it says, but one of the great, great lines in it, and I think that it's a line that that we, as women, for sure, uh, need to embrace. And where are you? If you if you just hold on one second, I hear this thing. So, 
I love this line. So the fourth part of it, it says, I have clearly written down a description of my definite chief aim in life, and I will never stop pursuing it until I have developed sufficient self-confidence for its attainment. And why that or develop sufficient self-confidence for its attainment is as you grow prosperously, you change and your self-confidence has to grow to the next higher level. Right. And so it's an ongoing process. You hit in your business, you hit hundred K. Well, now you get over 200. You got to grow your confidence. You're going from a 200 to a 500. You have to grow your confidence. You're going from a 500 to a million. You have to grow in confidence for that. It's different stages. You cannot go. The fallacy is that people assume I'm starting at zero and I'm going to be a million dollar business. No, you're not. Right. You are not. Unless you've invested in your mind to be able to receive and accept who you need to be to not only earn it, but to master it and keep it and use it wisely. Yeah. That's the whole lottery, you know. Right. right. It's why, why lottery, yeah. you know, within seven years, they lose all the money because they received the money. They had the mindset. They had the abundance mindset that said, I'm going to go. So, so they were attracted to it, but what they didn't know to do was have I become confident enough in understanding money so that I could keep it. Yeah. And that's really, really um, an important place to go. So, um, so I have that. And then what I do, I have a planned out for myself, my, my money budget, not based on what my money is this moment, but with the money that I want to spend. So if the world were a perfect world, and this is really an important thing, if the world was a perfect world for you, how much would you spend on monthly self-care? And I don't mean that you would say, oh, I'm going to spend $10,000. No, you won't, because you haven't figured out really what does that cost you? What does it cost you for your hair, your nails and pedicure, your brows, if that's your Reiki massage, your teeth cleaning, your facial, your strength coach, your, your spiritual advisor, your acupuncture court people, your, your executive Mayo physical. What does that look like on a monthly basis? You need to know those numbers. You need to know the numbers that you're spending, that you want to spend on your monthly household. So really how much more did you want to spend? What is your homeowners, your life insurance, your long-term, your disability, your health care, your car insurance, your spa, your significant other's insurance? What are you putting for savings and food and clothing and vacation and gifts and taxes? And your food delivery system, if that's what you have, what what does that look like? Doesn't mean that you're spending it right now, but you have to really be clear about this is what I'm. This is what I want. This is how I want to spend my money. And then you look at your business. So what, how do I want to spend my money? How do you want to do with your, you know, the, who you're paying? Maybe you're paying a bank loan. Well, what does that bank loan look like? How what are you paying your your bank, your bookkeeper, and your accountant? And are you on Canva, LinkedIn, eSpeakers? What's your coach? Do you want to have a coach? What are you going to pay them? What is your your what are you paying in Facebook and Google ads on a monthly basis? What about your memberships, your courses? Um, if you're doing virtual and you need a producer, what is it that could cost you for that production? What about you if you want a great photo shoot? What is that money, monthly money that you need to put aside for that? Or for GoDaddy or for your credit cards or your stylist or the course platform? What is it that you, what does that look like for you? right? So then you take your self-care, your household, your business, you add that up, you get that number. And usually you're shocked like, oh, I can do that. I can do that. And then you take it and you double it because then that's your stretch, right? But maybe you can't, maybe you're only making, maybe your monthly nut is 20,000. That's your monthly nut on, on the things that you want, right? Mm -hmm. But you're only making a thousand. Well, you know, you've got then the capacity of building in your mind so that you can have the confidence to feel that you're worthy of that. That's where the confidence, that's where the prosperity thinking comes in. That's where the thinking grow rich. That's where the investment, I mean, I spend two hours in a morning of investing in my mind, investing in my spirit, investing in what I know. Yeah. That's really important. 
And then the final thing that I'll share with my book, and I know that I've probably taken away too much time, but <laughs> my final thing is that um, everybody looks at their bank accounts and beats themselves about what's going on out there. But you have to be appreciative and grateful and celebrate. So I log in my book on every two days I go in, what has come in? What has come in? in? And I have a quote for like February. It's, I live in abundant world. Money always flows easily and effortless to me in my business. I'm in flow, blah, blah. A month is always showing up every month. I am worthy. I am valuable and I am precious. And and, and so I log, I go into my accounts and I write down how much money has come in. So sometimes it's only $5.79. Sometimes it's a couple of thousand dollars. It doesn't matter. What matters is that I'm writing my gratitudes for the reception of what I'm receiving. And that's where my head has to stay. I'm a... Um, my head has to say is I'm a generator. I'm a money maker. I'm a, I'm abundance receiver. I'm a prosperity, prosperous woman. Yeah. That's so powerful. And that doesn't come, you know, to me, for me, that doesn't come natural. My girlfriend, it's very natural. She makes millions of dollars. It's like, she goes, I don't know what everybody talks about prosperity. That's how she, but she, that's, She's doesn't recognize what well, she does now because we've talked a lot about it, recognize how much time she's invested in her mindset, in her body, because she came from really hard knocks, right? But she's in, always invested in knowing uh, financial literacy. She's, she became an accountant. She, she's taken tons of courses. She, so, so she's receiving because she's invested in it. Yeah. Yeah. And it is, it's such a, it's such a process. I still catch myself <clears throat> like the other day. I don't even know what it was, but you know, like I say, I, I, I don't like cleaning. I like things to be clean, but I don't like to clean the house. And I'm just like, you know, I need to, I, I want to hire a cleaner. And, I, and then like in the back of my mind, like, oh, can you afford a cleaner? I'm like, of course I can afford a freaking cleaner. Like, what, why do you, st like, stop that, stop that. Right. You know what I mean? Like, but, and, you know, truth be told, I would not eat so that I could have someone else clean my house. <laughs> right, <laughs> just, right. There's never probably been a time when I couldn't afford a cleaner, but I just like, it's just that little voice. Like, oh, that's an extravagance. You can't have that. Well, and it's also, uh, you're supposed to clean the house. Exactly. What yeah, am I, what lots of generational do? DNA goes in there. You're, that's what you're supposed to do. That's who you are. Oh, you're going to be like one of those. You're going to be like one of those people. You know, though the, so I think that's really important that people understand it's not just one belief. It's a combination of many little beliefs and cultural, cultural intonations that you have been receiving in your life over time that prevent you from allowing yourself to have what you choose to have. Yeah. And you know, and 90% of that stuff is all lies. You know, I love that story of the person, there was a story going around like at Christmas time where someone said that, you know, in their house, when they cook a ham, they were shocked to find that people don't cut off, that people don't cut off the end of the ham. They were shocked because that's what you do. And it wasn't until they kind of went on the self-discovery and they found out the reason that in her family, for generations, they cut off the butt of the ham was because their great-great-grandmother had a small pan and she couldn't fit it in. So she cut off the butt of the ha ham yeah. to fit it in. It had nothing to do with anything about the ham. She probably was turning in her grave saying, you, you idiots. <laughs> You're throwing that out for fools. <laughs> yeah, that, that's food. What are you doing? And it was just something that was passed on. So we had to be careful about that. Yeah. I used to see that a lot. I used to be in software and I would go, you know, I had to learn what they were doing today so that I could help them to, you know, learn the new system and stuff like that. And I went to this one company and there's like, she's got two computers on her desk. And I'm like, why do you have two computers on your desk? Well, you know, it used to be 
that, you know, when I really dug down, well, it used to be that our systems were so slow that we had time to work on two computers, but they don't anymore. Because now they just have, everybody just has two computers. I'm like, and the answer is always, but that's the way we've always done it. Yeah. 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 So we just had to be aware of that and yeah. all that. So I just, um, I'm going to say thank you because I'm wiggling from the water. <laughs> Okay, let's let's. So, do you do you want to pause or do you want to just take? Um, want me to just wrap up? Because I was just going to ask just you for some up. tips. Yep, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. But I'll, give me. I'll give. I'll get more tips for sure. You just show me. I'm just letting you know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so, Pagin, what would you give for advice to people who are like finding themselves? They know they're not living up to their potential. They know they've got more. They know. You know, they're just almost ready to tell that voice that is making excuses for them. They're almost ready to tell that voice to shut up. Like, what do you think people should do today that can start making a difference for them for the better? So if they're almost ready to tell that voice to shut up, number one, tell the voice to shut up. <laughs> um, and, and what that means is, is number, is part of that is that you're aware you're aware that the voice that you're the voice that you're hearing is not truth at all. So I would definitely say no. You know, just just if you're feeling it, it's because your insides are saying that's a lie. You're amazing. That's a lie. You're fantastic. So every time you have that feeling, um, and and the second thing that I think is really really awesome is I you know, I love listening to Esther Hicks, but one of the things that um, is is being aware that if you're feeling uncomfortable, if you're feeling sad, if you're feeling depressed, if you're feeling angry, if you're feeling not you're feeling less than. Those are really, really, really important messages for you that says that your body is telling you when you're feeling uncomfortable about it, your body is telling you, I'm not in alignment with what you're thinking right now. I'm telling you this. So it's kind of like, you, you know, when you stub your toe, you know, you're hurt, right? When you feel bad, when you're having these emotions, it is like it is exactly the same thing, but it's about what you're thinking. And so if you're thinking anger, sad, not good enough, not enoughness, not that it's because your inner self, your really true self is saying, I'm not going there with you. I can tell you that I'm awesome. I'm great. You want to think that I'm going to make you feel miserable because that's not the truth. So you have to shift your perspective of the negative emotions, the, the, the uncomfortable emotions, the sense of uh, you're just not going to go there because your inner self, the really true part of you is not going there with you. That's why you're uncomfortable. So you've got this rift between your true self that really knows that you're awesome and the the part of you that, that little net, net, what is it itty bitty, bitty, the itty bitty shitty committee shitty committee yeah. <laughs> they're in your head you know and and you want and so that's a so that's really important that's your second thing is that you have to know that when you're thinking those thoughts and you feel bad that's the committee talking to you it's not your true self switch it to the complete opposite. That's why writing the 17 seconds is so critically important. You need to have your life-saving piece with you. I have that. I have my 17 seconds in my wallet. I carry it in my pocketbook. Well, I carry this all the time because you have to be able to stop the momentum. The third thing that really is uh, important, I think for people is that you have to be willing to take time to fall in love with yourself. And that truly means write yourself love letters, send yourself flowers, write the celebration letter that you're waiting for your mother who's never gonna write the letter. Just write it to yourself. You have to love yourself and do the things for yourself that you would do for somebody else. So if you would write your husband or 
your your wife or whoever a love letter write it to yourself first acknowledge yourself congratulate yourself appreciate applaud acknowledge and accept yourself because you're perfect as you are wow that is beautiful advice begin thank you so much so I can't believe, I mean, I've way taken up way too much of your time already, but is there anything that I should have asked you that I didn't ask you anything you want to share? And also obviously tell us how we can buy your book and get in touch with you and all that good stuff. So there are two things, everybody go to Pegine, P-E-G-I-N-E dot club, C-L-U-B, where for the price of a Starbucks fancy coffee for that you buy one day, for 30 days, you get me in your ear for at least five minutes to help you shift your perspective and your thoughts. Number two is go to powerwomenworldwide.com. So if you're a leader or a woman in business and you want to accelerate your career, your business, your thoughts, you want to go to Power Women Worldwide, where there I support you to be bold, be brave, be seen, be heard, and be paid well. <laughs> you'll go to powerwomenworldwide.com. You'll see all the courses. You'll see the book. You'll see our mentoring and just take charge because if you don't do it, nobody else will. Beautiful. Awesome. Thank you so much, Pekin. It has been so great visiting with you. I wish we could spend the day. Maybe, maybe next time I'm in wherever we can have lunch or something. And then That'd be great. Awesome. That'd be great. And thank you so much for having me. Thank you. And thank you, listener, for listening. I know you have a choice of about 2 million podcasts. I'm really grateful that you're here and I'll see you next week.